<laughs> it's uh, 34 minutes past the hour here in the I'm Mr. Morning program. We had a shot of Senator John Thurn, Charles. Yeah. Uh, just before we went to that commercial break, uh-huh. standing there in the uh, Capitol, looked like a presidential portrait. Oh, he, that's a, that is a square-jawed, <laughs> handsome individual. Well, let's run that boy now. <laughs> uh, please welcome to the I'm Mr. Wayne program from South Dakota, Senator John Thurn. Good morning, Senator Thurn. Good morning, I'm Mr. How are you today? Well, I'm fine. Uh, I'm sorry you had to wait through all those commercials and stuff, but we we just we got to pay the bills. So. Uh, yeah, it's quite all right. I understand that. I'm still trying to uh, to adjust to Butler in the Elite Eight. I did not see that coming. So, and what a pleasure it is to have a senator on. We've been uh, knee deep in uh, people from the House of Representatives, who, as you know, are just about a notch below lawyers. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, you're not a lawyer, are you? I am not. Good. So tell me about the health care bill, what you think? Uh, well, I think it's going to be a disaster. I think it's going to take a, a little while for people to, to figure out exactly how this is going to impact them. But I can tell you one thing. I think people who assume that their premiums are going to go down are going to be very surprised when their premiums continue to go up. And I think a lot of people are going to be surprised when they start getting tax increases with this bill, too. But probably the thing that worries me the most about this, Imus, is the fact that it's going to pile trillions of dollars of additional debt on future generations. We cannot pay for this, and uh, I think we're going to have a, a, this is going to be something that we're going to be dealing with for a long time. It's another entitlement program, which is on top of entitlement programs that are already going bankrupt. Well, the good uh, elements of the bill go into effect almost immediately, and the the ones you're talking about, probably most of them don't go uh, into effect until uh, 2014. Is that right? Well, I think that's by design, too. The president's going to go out and sell the parts of this bill that everybody is for, covering pre-existing conditions, allowing kids to stay on their parents' plans until they're age 26. Some of the things that people are not going to like, or it's going to take a while for those to take effect. So uh, that's absolutely right. And, uh, and I, but I think when the, uh, when the chickens come home to roost, there's going to be a lot of grief with this bill and the impacts that it's, gonna be, that it's going to have, not just in the near term, but for, uh, for generations to come. The president, when I, and in my view, I thought, I thought it was slightly unprecedented. It wouldn't be the first thing he'd done that was that, though. But running around screaming, uh, well, it's not Armageddon, as I said it was. And it actually isn't, is it? I think that what, what, what I would characterize, and sure, there's a lot, there's a lot of uh, probably a little bit of hyperbole being used to describe the, the impacts of this. But it's clear to me that this sets our country on a track that continues to snowball toward more and more debt. And, and that really worries me. I think that our country right now, with these unfunded liabilities and Social Security and Medicare, is uh, on a pathway to bankruptcy, bankruptcy unless we change our ways. Uh, this certainly makes that much worse. And so uh, is it uh, Armageddon? You know, people aren't going to see probably tomorrow the, the sky start falling, but I think they're going to feel the impacts of this, uh, as I said before, not only in the near term, but for a long time to come. And, uh, and those impacts are not going to be good for this country. I think this is, a, this is a runaway train. It's more spending. It's more borrowing. It's more taxing. It's more control in Washington, D.C. by the federal government. I, I think that's why there was such a, uh, you know, a grassroots opposition to this across the country. And then comes we're talking with Senator John Thune, South Dakota, here in the I'm Swing program at uh, 22 till the hour. Well, a lot of Republicans are relying on this having a dramatic effect, as you just mentioned, Uh, on the elections in November. Do you you think that's the case? I think there will be uh, a a lot of people who are going to look at this, you know, with its passage and say this is the uh, federal government, again, growing and expanding at a time when you've got an economy in recession, you're running trillion-dollar deficits as far as the eye can see. And even though they may not feel the immediate impacts of this in in the sense that some of these tax increases don't take effect right away, I think what the one thing they're going to see is insurance premiums are going to keep going up. And that is an impact that they, I think they thought when the health care reform passed, it's going to mean, oh, my costs are going to go down. This bill doesn't address the underlying drivers of health care costs. Uh, what it does do, I think, is it, it expands coverage. It doesn't reform health care in this country. And as a consequence of that, I think most Americans are going to see their premiums continue to go up. Plus, they're going to see the government taking more and more control of their lives. And I do think that's going to be a big factor in the November elections. Is it true uh, that the president... And the Senate leadership staffs and their staffs, not not just everybody in Congress, but just those isolated to those people are exempt from changes in this health care bill. 
in some weird way, I, I believe that's true. We're still trying to get to the bottom of it. But at a minimum, members of Congress, their staffs, people in the executive branch, the government, if they're going to foist this on everybody else in this country, ought to be covered by it. Uh, that's what we understand to be the case, that uh, certain members of the administration and, and leadership here in Congress are not covered by this. And uh, that, that needs to be fixed because everybody ought to be feeling the impacts of what we're putting the American public into. And there are a number of things uh, in the bill that are apparently wrong or that they got they screwed up. What, what do you know about all of those, the various aspects of that part of the bill? Anytime you pass something with 2,700 pages in it, there, there are a lot of things that get buried in the fine print that have to be fixed. So my guess is there'll be what they call a technical corrections bill coming along pretty soon to try and fix some of those things. But remember, what we did in this bill yesterday, too, and this was, a, this was supposed to be the fixer bill that passed the House and then passed the Senate yesterday, not only does it do all these things with health care, but it also took over the student loan program, which kind of got eclipsed by the fact that this bill was mainly about health care. But they managed to sort of railroad, railroad this uh, takeover, federal takeover of the student loan program uh, through the Congress yesterday as well. And what that means for a lot of students around this country is higher interest rates on their student loans to help finance this new entitlement program, which is really amazing that they were able to pull that one off. But that's yet another gimmick that was used uh, in the so-called fixers uh, bill that passed yesterday. But my guess is, uh, in response to your question, there are going to be a lot of things that people find in this bill that are going to have to be fixed because anything, anytime you pass something that's 2,700 pages that creates massive new federal government and lots of new agencies and bureaucracies, uh, there are going to be problems with it. Well, back to uh, exempting the president and some of the uh, senior uh, and the Senate leadership and some of their senior staff, back to, uh, to exempting them from this bill. Would that be something that would be written into this bill? I think it may have been an oversight. I don't know for sure. Uh, again, I, this, is a, this is one of those impacts of this bill that everybody's starting now to, to, uh, to figure out. Uh, I mean, that my sounds assumption insane. Well, it would be insane if you, if you did. If that was done by design by somebody, that would be uh, inexcusable. Um, we'll see. I, my assumption is that it's an oversight that somehow they covered most people but not everybody and, and exempted a few people that, uh, you know, that didn't get listed on, on, on those that are going to be covered under this new plan. But it is absolutely, in my view, imperative that the uh, leadership of this country, if they're going to put this on the American people, that everybody be covered by it. And uh, so I, we will do everything we can to get that fixed. Yeah, that's something that, man, even people on Wall Street wouldn't pull. I mean, you wouldn't think. <laughs> yeah. It's well, 18 till they are. We're talking yeah. Senator John Thune here on the I'm Explain program. What were you going to say? Were you going to say something? No, I was just going to say, you're right. I don't think people on Wall Street would pull that. And, <laughs> and here in Congress, sometimes uh, when these things get done, the American people look at it, and it's why it fuels all the cynicism and and kind of disillusionment that you see around the country, and that's why there's all this frustration and all these protests. It's uh, people are they, they they believe I think that Washington isn't listening, and the way that Washington responded to their concerns about this health care bill, I think, proved that to be true. So the interest rates for student loans would be higher. What specifically does it do to the student loan program now? Well, here's what happened. They uh, right. there are now 2,000 lenders across the country that make student loans. This pulls. Right. All that back in, four federal call centers will handle all student loans. So now students will have one place to go to get student loans, and that's the federal government. And what they're going to do is charge students 6.8%, borrow at 2.8%, and the difference they're going to use to pay for, part of the difference that is, for this new health care entitlement program. They're taking about $9 billion of that money that they get into the student loan program to help pay for the new health care entitlement uh, that's going to be created under this bill. So uh, students across the country are, in effect, going to be paying a tax along with everybody else to pay for this new entitlement program. Not that they're gonna, not going to pay enough because of all the debt that we're piling on them that this bill is going to create as well. And what do you make of these uh, threats to both uh, Democrats and Republicans? I, th I think it's just a lot of frustration across the country. People are fearful. When people get scared, they do, they do strange things. And you can't, you know, tolerate any of that. We can't abide or condone any of the things that are going on. And people have an opportunity, and they, they should in this country, to protest, but to do it in a respectful way, in a legal way. And I think you're seeing a lot of that. But as is the case, anytime you get a lot of people who are very worked up about something, there are some people who carry it too far and go to some extremes. And, and that shouldn't be... That shouldn't be allowed. We, we shouldn't be in any way uh, condoning that. It's unfortunate that some of these things are happening. But I think it is evidence of tremendous frustration at the grassroots level uh, from people across this country over the, what they see happening in Washington, D.C.
16 to lay hour here on the Imus Wine Program. We have a couple minutes left with Senator John Thune from South Dakota, digressing like a drunk at a Christmas party. Uh, sort of an icy meeting between the president and Bibi Netanyahu. What's that all about? Well, I think that uh, the president and his administration have to remember that uh, our best, most reliable ally in the world is Israel. And in, at times there are things that come up that uh, perhaps create a little bit of tension in that relationship. But that shouldn't in any way negate the fact that we have to stay totally committed to making sure that Israel is a strong democracy that is secure. And uh, we, we, I think some of the things that the administration did with regard to that relationship here uh, shouldn't have been done. And uh, it's put Israel in a difficult position. But nevertheless, uh, we both have to, re- or I think we say we both, both countries have to remember that this is a relationship that's built upon trust and respect and shared interest and shared values, and we need to continue to strengthen it. Always nice to have you on the program. Thanks for waiting, and thank you very much. Good to be with you, Imus. Senator John Thune, South Dakota, here on the Imus Wine Program. It's 15 to Leon.